Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Sunday Best <laughs> with the two tea bags, Isuru Jinasena and my friend Gavin Kelly in the house. How was your week, yeah, bro? You know, it was good, man. It was good. We got lots of uh, changes in my life. You know? <laughs> did you try? Did you enjoy the newfound freedoms? Yes, yes. Well, I didn't <laughs> go. I didn't go out because I'm still scared. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I went out. Yeah, no, no, not that I'm scared of COVID. I'm scared of the police. Uh, I trust those motherfuckers. Mm. I don't trust those motherfuckers. <laughs> Where did you go, bro? Where did you go out? I went to House Kitchen. Was up the road. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. My homie just phoned me, and he was like, "Let's go have drinks. Let's celebrate Independence Day because it was the Tuesday." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we go there to like House Kitchen. And order some drinks. And it was so, like, chilled, bruh. You just have to... Like, no one's wearing masks. <laughs> There's no sanitation. Oh, for real? People don't give a shit. <laughs> Yo, bruh, people didn't give a fuck, bruh. The, so... There's, there's only yeah. alcohol to sanitize your soul. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bruh. Your demons, bruh. <laughs> yeah, you just had to sign some raggedy paper. So sign your name in and your cell phone number. And, yeah, I was chilling, but we like... 10 minutes into chilling, I saw a grown ass man vomit, bruh. I was like, ah, you see. Oh, uh, mm, bruh. <laughs> this, it's like, this is why we bend it. <laughs> People are like you, bruh. But it was a grown ass man and he vomited like a toddler, bruh. Just bleh, bleh, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, no. no. I was so disappointed, bruh. So I think, yeah, man, it's, it's nice, but the alcohol, yeah, some people can't handle it. It's actually quite crazy because on, I think Wednesday or Thursday, the route that I drive to, on, uh, to work, there's a there's a checkers by the by in, in Bryanston. I think it's called Bryanston Corner or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when I went in there, because I always stop by there in the evening sometimes to pick up whatever random shit, and I saw these two guys by you know, the, the, they stopped selling alcohol at what half past four. Yeah. That's yeah. Half past four. Yeah. yeah. So I saw these two guys by the by the wine the cage. Just go, ah, <laughs> Just let us in Let us in Get angry bro mm-hmm. And they were, you can see They're drunk as fuck as well So they've been drinking all day mm-hmm. and they, just wanted, they wanted a top up Yeah dude So I went out on the Tuesday On the Wednesday I went to like a steers Slash uh, Fisherways You know when Fisherways. it's combined <laughs> You know when it was It's combined most It was just called Steers away <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm, get, I'm there getting Fish and chips And the steers milkshake and then this uh, young, like, black lady walked in without a mask. And then this old white lady <laughs> started being a Karen about it. Oh, no. <laughs> so then they started fighting, bruh. But the thing is, the young black lady, she was drunk, bruh. This was a later uh, time. Um, so it was... Uh, see, now, see this alcohol mm, thing? <laughs> hey, bruh. It was amazing. Race was involved. Oh, yeah. had to be, no, in South Africa, it had to be, bro. And it's so interesting. By that Bryanston corner, on the opposite side, there's an office park. And there's this huge grass embankment where some of the, like, the garden staff and the workers sit there during lunchtime or whatever in the evening when they're getting picked up with the taxi. Yeah. Now, sure. This week, when I was driving past there, I just saw courts. Lying across everywhere, courts everywhere, bro. <laughs> I saw a couple of courts as well this week. This is randomly. It's like, like they just started <laughs> appearing. Like, <laughs> like who, who, who's this magician around here, bro? <laughs> hey, the courts are back, bro. The courts are the back. Courts are bro. Back. Mm-hmm. But the tennis courts are banned. <laughs> no, really, but the tennis courts are banned, dude. I've got a friend who's playing tennis in a complex. She's not allowed to play tennis. Because Tennis South Africa has stopped all tennis courts from being used. Why? Isn't COVID-19, tennis also bro. like a social distancing sport? Like one exactly, of the best. bro. Unless you're playing doubles. <laughs> yeah, unless you're playing doubles. But we're playing singles. The other guys over there, bro. It's far. <laughs> you have to smack the shit the out of is, that ball. The thing is, if you're playing doubles, there is a, a certain amount of social distancing unless the partner that you're playing with is absolute shit. <laughs> 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 uh, that's funny, bro. Yo, <laughs> cause like, why are you getting in my space, bro? Stand there. <laughs> Get your head in the game, man. <laughs> Come on, Jerome. I don't know who Jerome is. I don't know why you're Jerome. <laughs> I don't know who Jerome. I don't even know a Jerome. I've never met a Jerome. <laughs> yeah. No, I know Jer- Jerome. I don't even know a Jerome. <laughs> I'm sure there's a Jerome who knows us like these bastards. <laughs> <laughs> these these two tea bags. 
<laughs> yeah, so let's start the show, bro. Let's um. Oh yeah, what we came here to do, huh? Right? Yeah, we got a crazy week ahead of us. Uh, okay, so this article says massive data attack exposes personal info of 24 million South Africans. I don't know if it's data or data, but hey, potato, potato, <laughs> tomato, tomato. People always have this debate about data, data. I fucking hate it. Yeah, it costs <laughs> the same. Data and data cost the same. Mm. Yeah, it's expensive. Either way, it's expensive. <laughs> It's overpriced and it goes away too quickly. Especially by Vodacom's fucking. Yo, mm-hmm. Vodacom is ruthless with their data, bruh. Huh? Dude, I, I bought I bought a gig of data for like 150 bucks, dude. <laughs> and I was telling these these uh, colleagues of mine, they've they're using Telcom, I think Rain or something like that. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. looked at them, they're like, oh, 150, bruh. I was like, yeah, isn't that the standard price? They're like, no, they're paying like 30 bucks. I'm like, fuck. Yo, bruh, I, at the beginning of lockdown, I didn't have Wi-Fi, so I was on my Vodacom hustle. <laughs> <laughs> I saw flames, bruh. I saw flames, oh, bruh. You know what? You. You're trying to get some free bundles, bruh. <laughs> Star one. Man, the data Star. really hurt my wallet. Six. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bruh. Yes, it killed me. Two weeks, I uh, struggled. But, oh, yeah. shit, man. And the thing is, you couldn't even watch porn, bro. You're like sparing ah, no, 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 no. That was number one, bro. <laughs> then Zoom meetings <laughs> like, and like, then like emails. Have... <laughs> <laughs> there was number one was was. was <laughs> I thought you, I thought you were avoiding it, like the the porn videos and the porn gifs. It was only pictures, bro. Remember those days when we used to jerk off to pictures. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> wait. You're telling me you're telling me you never picked up a porn magazine when you were a nah, kid. Nah, my first my first uh, interaction was with porn was a magazine. Uh, yeah, you see. Yeah, yeah and you jumped off. Yo, yo, I I fucked that. I, I tore that porn magazine up. <laughs> <laughs> you tore the page up. Wow. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay yeah, back on course here yeah, though. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Massive so this, data um, attack. Well, it's this interesting. article is, yeah, it's twenty-four million people. That's a lot, eh? That's like what? What's how many? What's the population of South Africa? Forty-three, like f- forty-four million. Fifty, yeah. So, so it's like half. Yeah, of it's us. almost half. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, I think only half of us have uh, are registered in the credit bureau. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of us are off the grid. <laughs> Other half are off the grid. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <bro>. <laughs> so <laughs> they're safe. <laughs> Yeah, the ones who don't have any loans and stuff is pretty safe. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, the SA Banking Risk Information Center confirmed that the credit bureau Experian suffered a data attack and it's been exposed personal information of about 24 million people. 8,000 new business unit entities have fallen. Yeah, ne? And have, have you even heard of Experian? No, bro. I don't know. I, this, is, this is like a different <clears throat> language, bro. Credit bureau. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> well, I know about the credit bureau, dude. I know that the credit bureau will fuck you up if you don't pay your loans. Oh, is it? Yeah. Eh? Shit. Yeah. That's how you get blacklisted. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You're not your credit worthy ish. Yeah, exactly. Then you want, you get denied loans and stuff. It's pretty. They're pretty fucked up, to be honest. And the fact that they just let our our information out like that shows that I. Damn if you do. Damn if you don't. What are they gonna do with this information? Well, it depends on who takes the information. If they're hackers who can get access to people's accounts who are extremely wealthy, they can just transfer money around them. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's, but I guess this is also how dodgy people get your number. Once people get your number, it says they get their number and their ID. That's You can do Yeah, that. exactly. You can do when something with that. ID number, you can do a lot with that, too. Also, South African Totsis, man, they, they're innovative, bruh. So they, they're good with this shit, bruh. <clears throat> Yeah, like if you SIM swap and get the the number of the person that you just took, you can easily get an OTP to that number. <gasps> That's true, eh? Yo. That's fucking scary, bro. I like the picture they used. It's always like a white guy in a hoodie when it comes to hacking. <laughs> yeah, dude. Not like some fat slobbery guy with glasses, you know? <laughs> it's like a white dodgy guy with a hoodie. Always in the dark. <laughs> It's like you're covering his eyes, dude. Like, come on, <laughs> can you even see the? And also look at the password. His password. <laughs> <laughs> Not much of a hacker. <laughs> Jeez, bro, I didn't have much to do, bro. Yo, <laughs> your passwords are getting hectic these days. One capital letter and one number. 
in your password. Uh, <laughs> passwords are so frustrating. I just let Google generate my passwords and I save them. So uh, 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 really? That's crazy. Yeah, dude, they can, they've got <laughs> password generators on their thing, so it's like a random code of XG4 capital hash, whatever. You know? Yo, uh, my password is my favorite author. But, Who is? Uh, J- J- I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you, so they can hack. <laughs> they can hack me. No ways, dude. <laughs> There's only like a limited number of authors. I'm sure they can hack you too. <laughs> There's one look at my bookcase. I, <laughs> all, they do, all, all they gotta do is break into your apartment, look at your shelf, and be like, that's the one. <laughs> it's got a lot of porn, yeah. <laughs> you have to. That's you, my you <laughs> You think Hugh Hefner's password was, was Playboy69? So this article is about the tents that were never, well, that were there. So city of Cape Town homeless site under fire for 43 million rand tent hire. 43 million rand for a tent, bro? Damn it, bro. <laughs> what does this tent do, bro? Sure. Do this, it, if I pay 43 million rand for a tent, it would be like those Dragon Ball Z capsule tents. You just pop up. <laughs> and then you're in it. Yo, bruh. You when, you, when you go to Opi Opi, Opi you're that guy, bruh. Exactly, Opi, bruh. Yo. Um, what I read in this article is interesting. This is like funded or supposed to be funded through the, the Good Party. The Good Party? Yeah. Who's the Good Party, bruh? There's no such thing. <laughs> the only Good Party is like a Kitchener's on a Tuesday night. That's a Good Party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. They called the good party, bruh, in the article there, bruh. Yo. More like the no for good party. How they call themselves call... the good party, bro. Yeah, bruh. Isn't that ironic? Or an oxymoron. Yeah. Yo, hey, they child these people's monies. Yeah, there. So the biggest expense which was caught the attention of the good party was 10 to 10 credit to more than 43 million. Dude, 53 million was a total cost of operation. It went to 26,500 rand per person. 520 rand per, per night per person to sleep in those things. That's more than... That's more than a Protea hotel. Protea is like 499. What not Protea? Yeah, yeah bro. Uh, Wait. Uh, <laughs> what's the City Lodge? The City Lodge is like 499 or 399, even Formula One. Yeah, bro. You could go to get a nice Airbnb for that price, bro. Yeah, mm, dude. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> There's no so, ways Like in, for those conditions uh, If I was a homeless guy And I saw the numbers I'm like I, I, I'm going to City Lodge <laughs> <laughs> For this amount of money I'm getting this Oh what? Uh, uh, yeah, this, this was, yeah This is obviously A tender Tender gone south Like Yeah the, What do they call it A, a COVIDpreneur Yeah They call it well, yeah, For example This this, uh, this uh, article says Strandfontein site May have been used to funnel money to COVID preneurs. Yeah, COVID preneurs. That's such a funny yeah, so name. There's, ten, there's tender preneurs, there's COVID preneurs, there's Tinder preneurs. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild out here, bro. I got to be careful, bro. But this was supposed to be like a facility for the homeless, right? And then. Yeah. I remember we and did so, a story on this. Like, we did a story dude, about the Dude, we've been following home. the story f- from the beginning of yeah. lockdown. We've been following the story, dude. Yeah, man. I, so I remember. And they, the, the homeless hated staying there, remember? Because they couldn't yeah, drink. Dude, they they couldn't. Also, dude, it's been so bad. I think this article talks about it's so bad that there was a woman that was raped. People yeah. were bringing drugs again. Shit yeah. like that. It was just... Yo, bruh. This is a, a, a hectic homeless camp. Yo. Yo, I won't lie. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's either this or the bridge down the road, you know. It's like, at, <laughs> at least there you have freedom, I guess. Yo. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, there's no freedom. They're locked in and they have arid conditions. But but this, this, this corruption shit, bro, I mean, I don't even know what to say anymore. I don't want to go on about it because then I'll just sound like an average South African white complaining citizen. Yeah. You know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Coming with that Karen energy, man. Yo. Yeah, dude. Like, I want to look for solutions. I want to talk about solutions, what we should do, rather than... I told you this. government, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but I told you, bro. It's corruption. We all speak it, bro. It's, just, it's the... Yeah. It's an official language. 
So you gotta get yours, bro. Get yours. <laughs> get yours, <laughs> while I get mine. <laughs> Uh, bad, but that's the thing like, mm. I mean I've spoken about this in previous episodes Where like, we like to complain about corruption But we rate the benefits from it bro. We do mm. In small ways, big ways I mean It's like a it is, It's like a vicious circle definitely But there's some harmony in it But yeah, it, it needs to stop from, Especially when it comes to government Like this is hectic money bro 43 million, they could have done so much better With something with that amount, they could have just, like really help the homeless, bro. You, yeah. To be honest, I'm sure the person who stole this money probably bought like one house in Clifton, <laughs> or one bedroom, bro. <laughs> A one bedroom <laughs> apartment in Clifton, bro. That's what they yes, bought. yes. Now it's an Airbnb for how much? <laughs> Eight hundred rand. <laughs> <laughs> it's still cheaper than this place. <laughs> Yo, the property took a knock, bro. Like hotels and all that shit. It took a knock from, lo- yeah, from lockdown. Yeah, it will come back, though. It will come back strong. It's just going to take... It has to kickstart. Yeah, it will come back when more more husbands start cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro. Yes, cheating, mm. cheating husbands is good mm. hotel business, guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah, mm. yeah bro. It's good for... Or even cheating mm. wives. Any che- cheating partners. It's good for... For entanglements. <laughs> for entanglements. So this article says DJ Fresh hits back at Herman Mashaba for dissing EMS workers for the hashtag Jerusalem challenge. Um, so if any of you have been following the socials, the Jerusalem challenge has been actually taking the world by storm, bro. Have you seen? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 47 million hits on YouTube. Yeah, dude. I mean, I've been on Twitter. I've been seeing random videos of like... People in Russia, people in the Middle East, doing their Jerusalem challenge. It's like it's, it's spreading, bro. It's spreading faster than COVID. <laughs> it <laughs> seems to be very contagious, bro. It seems to be very contagious. Yeah, dude. It's got, it's got a lot of mild symptoms, though. Mild symptoms. <laughs> uh, yeah, now DJ Fresh is hating on Herman Mashaba for, you know. Yeah, but that's because... Um, Herman Mashaba saw this video of, of the workers doing the Jerusalem challenge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but we love to dance. It's our it's, it's a coping mechanism for South Africans. Um. Yeah, no, of course, the dancing is, is, is very important for. Uh, oh my goodness, he's a. He's <laughs> yeah, he's a it's a. Whoa, guys. <laughs> <laughs> is this. <laughs> Uh, it's happening, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. The, they were saying like uh, they sh- they could be doing better things with their time. Well, that was Herman Mashaba's um, argument. Yeah, he said this is the second clip I've seen this week. He said this is the second clip I've seen this week from a different municipality. Countries train their law enforcement agencies to protect their citizens. We train them to dance. What on earth is happening? Yes. So and he DJ criticized. Fresh. And DJ Fresh yeah. said. DJ uh, Fresh said, Sir, it's called people on a break choosing what to do with their break. Unless you don't believe people to sh- should let their hair down, respite nyana, they also do loo breaks, by the way, and lunch and go home after their shifts, the DJ said. Yeah, so what's your take on this? Do you think that people are just dancing in jail? Isn't, <laughs> they're not really uh, focused on their work, or do you <laughs> think that we need the dancing? I don't know. I think it's interesting that there's conflict over Jerusalem and challenge. It's like Herman Mashaba is Israel and DJ Fresh is Palestine. It's brilliant. <laughs> to be honest, dude, I didn't see the dance. When I saw Jerusalem and yeah. challenge, I was like, what, what is this challenge? Does this mean we have to watch that local South African TV <laughs> movie, the movie again? <laughs> Who's, are, they, are, they, are, they, are they hijacking buildings <laughs> in Hell we brawl again <laughs> the Jerusalem Challenge challenges to hijack CBD buildings bro <laughs> Jerusalem sure bro I am assuming Jerusalem is in context to Jerusalem uh, I'm assuming too bro it's, yeah, I, think it's it's, the, I think it's a given <laughs> okay then the, the song unless, I don't unless, know what the song is people, about I'm not gonna lie unless yeah, unless people who speak Hebrew have anything to say about it. 
<laughs> I mean, this could have easily been the Jerusalem Malema challenge. <laughs> yeah, I guess it. I mean, it shows two things. One, yeah, maybe Mashab is right that these guys should be uh, focused on helping. Two, or oh, actually three things. Two, it could be that. You know, it's a lie. There isn't actually that many people. It, it kind of shows that there are people suffering and dying. How come we don't see videos of people coughing in hospital beds, dying? Ah, ah, COVID-19, ah, ah, COVID-19. We've seen people dance at the hospitals. Come on, bro. <laughs> it shows that. Like, every, I don't get it. Dude, mainstream media, as soon as there's war in, in, in a, like an African a- or Asian country, they're showing kids suffering, crying in the streets. Ah, screaming, ah, crying, mm-hmm. dying. But now there's a disease... They don't show us a single person coughing in a hospital bed. Oh, come yeah. on, man. Come on. <laughs> show us. We want receipts. Us. We want receipts. Exactly, mm. bro. <laughs> uh, oh, so, so number three is maybe that the lockdown has been so bad that like, guys, we just need to go to the nightclub and groove. Mm. <laughs> Good jive, bro. Let just off. one night. Just, just dance, off, out. dance off these demons. No, exactly. yeah. I think dancing is such a great... Po- and it also... Yeah, it definitely is an African thing, though. This like dancing, using dance, like in this level of like expression. So, but like yeah, this, yeah, no, it's this just, song has taken over the world. It's crazy, bro. Yeah, I haven't actually even listened to it because I just when I see trends, I'm just like, ah. yeah, <laughs> I'm too cool for a trend. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't at me. <laughs> Don't fuck your trend. <laughs> I'm swimming against the stream, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what it's like a it's like a house song, but like a little bit of boom. So yeah. Yeah, no, I I you know what I think it just reminded me of that other one, the Dibala song, the one where people were just falling to the ground and sleeping. <laughs> hey, Dibala, they were just falling. T- Put that in the in the the wedding repertoire before the yeah. Gets I'll married. just YouTube mm-hmm. a, a YouTube a tutorial video. Learn it before the next wedding. Then I'm good. <laughs> How's the dancing with the with the one toe situation, bro? Oh, I mean, if I can walk, I can dance. But hey, it's, it's, get down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just my toilet is not the same though because my arm is fucked. So it's like, <laughs> it just does this, this right thing that like it fucks up. <laughs> They come here with a skoro skoro toalatza, bro. Yo. <laughs> it's like it breaks, bro. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna break into another dance move, bro. Start, <laughs> start dabbing while I'm trying to toilet. It's just like, whoa. <laughs> Break dancing. Uh. <laughs> it's more like broken dancing. So this, uh, this article says, scans peak beneath wrappings of ancient mummified animals so researchers say x-ray images of cat bird and cobra shed light on their lives and this but egyptians were insane they used to mummify animals bro yeah for the gods bro for the gods yeah mm. would you get mummified i don't know what is mm. the purpose of being mummified so that what you go into so you don't you do take it takes longer for you to decompose or i don't know so when you walk into the afterlife you've got bandages and what, <laughs> you look like a ninja i don't what what is the point thing <laughs> But what I what I read was it's, it's to preserve the body. So the Egyptians thought if you preserve the body, the spirit can something like move more freely to the afterlife or something like that. Okay, wow. So if it decomposes quickly, you don't have much time to get into the afterlife. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. There is some sort of spiritual soul Meaning behind to, from body. Like, yeah. The, 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 the Egyptians were fascinating. <clears throat> Yeah, no, but I mean, it's quite amazing that, like, we still think about our soul after we die. Like, the fact that I mean, I mean, you think about funerals now when we put into caskets. There's all that fabric in there. There's the gold plating on the wooden casket. It's just, and I think about how long does it take for that to decompose before the body actually decomposes. So, I mean, like, maybe that's where we got it from the ancient Egyptians. Yeah, true. Yeah. Eh? Yeah, because they <clears throat> they mummified the. They're dead, and then they put it in coffins. But I'm especially like yeah. the pharaohs and the actually like the kings and mm. <clears throat> yeah. Apparently, the ancient Chinese were also like some of the ancient Chinese civilizations used to have tomb tombstones and certain caskets to bury, while Europeans were still just like tossing bodies into into pits. And oh, really? Yeah. The, so- hey, the soil lack gets stenched. <laughs> lack of culture, bruh. Bastards. Obviously. <laughs> dirty their own soil before they go to other lands to dirty it, bro. 
that's how shit like the plague probably fucking spread, bro, because your fucking bodies weren't. Yeah, there has properly. to be a balance between serving respect for the dead, but not fucking bre- breaking the bank for a tombstone and a coffin. Yeah, no, we can't think these extravagant funerals like Mandela's funeral. Oh. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> fucking! This is in a this is a concert now, bruh <laughs> I mean, didn't they make a concert for Triple Six Four concert, bro? Bro, you can go to Checkers and buy golden tickets, bro. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and you even rocked it. You're like, ah, but Mandela's not even here. <laughs> I remember with Mandela, they transported the body so we could go see him dead. Like you could, like yeah, dude, in, uh, in yeah, Pretoria, people yeah, want to go see. Uh, yeah, and you think about it. That's not Mandela anymore, bro. The soul has left the building, bro. Yeah, exactly. He bounced a long time ago. And when he, esca- <laughs> he escaped his own Robin Island, bro. His internal Robin Island. <laughs> that's so funny, yo. That's actually deep. Yes, <laughs> it's it's a, a metaphor, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that staring over me. Wow, I'm like, deep, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Even when he was out of prison, he was still in prison. So out of prison <laughs> for another twenty years. By the white years. man. By the <laughs> white man. <laughs> <laughs> ah shit. Uh, yeah. It's amazing um, the respect we show for the dead. I guess it's it's also how we say goodbye. It's uh, it's also interesting, you know. It's so funny. My my girlfriend actually sent me a video about these people like uh of these people at a funeral and this one guy was talking and giving his last respect he's like yeah we must respect the dead and but uh this guy he wasn't a very good guy he was actually a bastard so <laughs> 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 yeah he even said that at the funeral bro <laughs> 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 so this is about love what is love mm-hmm. Baby, uh, don't student. hurt me. <laughs> me. Don't, don't hurt, hurt me. me. No, no more. That's in my fucking head, bro. <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> so this uh, article says, student hand writes 100 letters to find girl he met in park. Oh, dude. I would have been done after the two, the first two letters, bro. Bruh, yeah, bro. Is it is it endearing or is it creepy, bro? Like I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, dude. This guy um, wrote a whole book, bro. He basically wrote a book. So what happened here is that he he met this girl in the park and then mm. they exchanged phone numbers. But according yeah. to this guy, she made a typo. <laughs> Nah, player. <laughs> if, a, <laughs> if a honey likes you, she's not gonna make a typo, bro. Yeah, she's not gonna give you the wrong number by mistake. We've all been there, bro. We've all got a number and ah, the one digit is wrong. Oh, and then you try to look for her and say no, but you give the wrong number. Well, um, <laughs> take a hint, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, one seven. Damn, where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, bro. Shame. And yeah, so he, he wrote a hundred letters and he went to the street that she mentioned when they were talking. And then he started sending all these letters to every house. And what did he write there? So I think it's at the bottom there. Yeah. yeah. Um, last week in Red I wore a yellow shirt and orange shorts. Uh, you were so elegant, genuine, and sexy. Oh, that's... I mean, this guy's got some amazing, you know, words. Hey, shake us. convincing. Shake us, be a watch out. <laughs> shake us, be a watch out. I'm upset. I didn't check straight away whether your number was correct because it had a typo, and so I couldn't contact you. I'm sorry if, as a result... You felt ignored. I'm not letting this unlucky event... Denial. Stopping. <laughs> Bruh, I'm not letting this unlucky event stopping us from hanging out again soon, which is why I wrote this letter and sent it to every goddamn house on Kimbleton. Hopefully it reached you. Call me. Hope this letter finds you well. Serban. 
So this guy ended off like an email. Mm. Hope this letter finds you well. <laughs> Deuces. I love you though. Mm. Oh. This guy could have... You could have just searched for her on Facebook and sent her a DM. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> this is, what's your name? What's your surname? I mean, the, year, the year is 2020. Was, bruh, it's, yeah, it's, but we're still writing letters. I like... That's what I'm saying. This is like this is not really romantic. It's kind of got like a hint of desperation towards it. Mm. Mm. Also, like you gotta believe in fate. If it's meant to be, you find her again. Yeah, as well, bro. If you didn't have game, you didn't have the game, bro. Just <laughs> go home, do some homework, and then try again with the next one. Yeah. So, mm. like, was the typo by her or by him? Because if she read the number out, and he was putting it into his phone. He either misheard a number or she intentionally gave him a wrong number. But if he gave her the phone, then there's no typo there, bro. <laughs> there's no typo. My play is not a typo. I'm telling you, if a woman wants to give you a number, she'll give you her number, bro. Yeah. Yeah, there won't be typos. Uh, Shame, bro. Uh, yeah, I feel bad for the guy. But also, dude, like, okay, so he wrote a hundred letters of the same letter. Yeah. Why couldn't you just use a photocopying machine, bro? <laughs> have you have you ever ri- written a love letter to a girl, bro? Yeah, I've done some poetry. Yeah, same. Yeah, bro, same. I've done some poetry. Yeah, no. I, also, I'm a writer, so I can't put pen to paper. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. you, bro. I did, yeah. I've done the same. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was nice. I mean, I actually missed those days when I was romantic and I used to believe in that <laughs> hippity, hippity jibbity bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, bruh. This guy, this guy's in for a rude awakening, bruh. He's gonna realize that what a mampara he was for <laughs> right, <laughs> writing 100 letters. Yo, he's gonna learn the hard way, bruh. Oh, but are you, uh, uh, are you a uh, hopeful romantic? I used to be, bro. Like, look, I still do like doing romantic gestures, but you can do things like in a subtle way and make it romantic. You don't have to go over the top, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, and and it's, also, it's also dependent per person, you know, like for some people, a hike alone together in a park or whatever is, is romantic. For some people, a, a fancy restaurant dinner is romantic. For yeah. others, it's not, you know, it just it's very, it's a very relative. Yeah, concept. it's a, it's interesting concept. I think giving your time to somebody is romantic and somebody giving their time to you. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's with the five languages of love. I mean, for some people, certain languages resonate better than others and they find romance in it, you know? Yeah, yeah that's true, eh? So, also, what like are you breakfast do- in bed. Breakfast in bed for someone might be very romantic. For others, it might be like an OCD, like, ah, crumbs in the bed. What the mm. fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's so true, eh? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, that's true. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, one man's trash, another man's <laughs> treasure. <laughs> Yeah, howdy, bruh. I think this guy is going to be single for a while. Well, no, he has the romantic vibes. So my <coughs> charmer lady day. Yeah, I don't know, man. Oh, just just, just get, get yourself Tinder, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, you, just, you just have to swipe a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from matters of the heart to matters of the penis. <laughs> 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 this is why the man wrote a hundred letters, bruh. <laughs> to get some of that. <laughs> this is why so he could use... He could do this. <laughs> uh, okay, so this article says, would you consider a 52,000 rand offer to have sex on eight different mattresses? Um, I guess it depends. For me, it depends on the mattress. Like, if it's one of those uh, pissed ghetto-ass mattresses that you find <laughs> in CBD hijacked buildings. No thanks. But um, <laughs> if it's like a Simmons... Ah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. The mattress is important for the sex game, actually. A yeah. good mattress can help with good sex. Definitely, I fully agree that. Like, for example, a f- like sex on a futon is amazing, bro. Like, it's, you don't get that tricky, tricky bounce. It's like, it's like very, it's very like tantric almost. You know? What's a futon again? It's like those uh, cult or Japanese style mattresses. Oh, I had one of those things, like a mattress on yeah. like planks, and then it's like, yeah. On planks, yeah, but it's like, it's not like low. a bouncy, it's not a spring. Yeah, so yeah it's very low. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had one of those. Yeah, I, I actually broke one of mine 
with some random one night stand chief. Yo, she really? Fucking, uh, Yo, yeah, damn. damn right. And I was still, I was still injured that time. I had a boot boot on, and then my arm. She just and she she wrecked me, bro. She wrecked my place and wrecked me. It was just it's a smash and grab, boy. Yes. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the futon was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> After I was done, the food owner was like, I got those high mass. Ah, shit. <laughs> but you know what, dude? I think, I think the, the, the base, the bed base is more important to test than the mattress. Tell because us my current My current bed base is broken and it makes a squeaky sound. And that's the annoying part about a bed. Not the actual mattress. I mean, you can fuck on, on concrete floor, bro. It's, you know, it's yeah, just, shit. No, but uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Um, I've had... The only bad mattress experience I've had is like uh, where the springs start to fuck out. And they start to poke Did it pop, the, did it pop out and poke you? Yeah, it was poking me. It didn't come through it, but I could feel it in my sleep, like getting poked by springs. Are you sure that was the spring or a strap on she had? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a spring, bro. It was bouncing. <laughs> uh, I once, that's, uh, dude, that must be hmm? that must be uncomfortable, bro. Yeah, no, I've had some bad beds, bro. I once slept on a, a blow up mattress. Ever been on uh, a blow up mattress? No, I don't <laughs> like those, dude. I don't. Yeah, I had one, bro, and then it would, it would like it had like a little hole, so it would slowly oh, deflate. No. <laughs> so by the morning you're sleeping on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Every night before bed, I had to go to the shower garage and pump it up. <laughs> <laughs> Every get, morning. Get, get your workout before you go to bed, bro. <laughs> but you know what I hate about those blow up mattresses was that when you sleep, let's say if it's a double, right? If you sleep on one side, like in the morning, it's tilted and the thing is half in the air and it's just looking at you. And you like you wake up and you just see this mattress. <laughs> <Yo. lingo. laughs> I never Keep slept on a sh- double, bro. Yo, that must, that must be interesting. I slept on a single. Dude, you need two people on a double, that's for sure. <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, but the, the, the point of this, uh, would you consider 52K? Hell yeah, dude. To have sex in eight, I mean, as long as it's with eight different women. <laughs> I mean, we are testing, yeah. Man, we must see... <laughs> Different weights, different heights. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> different sizes, different everything. Bunda. Yeah, Munna must earn that 52k, right? Yeah. There must be eight different women from eight different nations. You know? <laughs> With eight different sized breasts. Yo, that's 16 breasts. 16 boobies. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of boobs. Uh, um, this article says Swiss town covered in chocolate after Lint Factory spews its glorious product. So their ventilation system fucked out and there were like cocoa bean fragments and chocolate nibs spewing out all over town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it must be nice, but we had to run around the town like this. Ah! <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's snowing chocolate, bruh. Yo, Bro. I would make a chocolate snowman, bruh. <laughs> but like, yeah. it, it, it won't be blackface, so it'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it'll be brown face, dude. Depending whether you use eighty percent cocoa or fifty percent cocoa. <laughs> so dark, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate. <laughs> all of, all of, bro. Uh, you know what? I'd be running around town with a glass of milk in my hand, <laughs> <laughs> doing angels. <laughs> chocolate angels. Chocolate angels, bro. <laughs> uh. How nice, bruh. I, like, this is an actual, an actual chocolate factory, bruh. It's yeah, like, dude. Like a Charlie I, I want to, chocolate factory. Yeah, I was just about to say, I want to own the Charlie, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a, oh, this is a proper chocolate factory. Oh, no, it's, we, it's, mm-hmm. it's Willy Wonka that owns the fucking chocolate factory, bruh. Not Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Charlie's the guy who got the golden ticket, bro. <laughs> what about R. Kelly's chocolate factory? <laughs> no, you get the golden. You don't get the golden ticket. You get the golden shower. <laughs> Yo, bro. You don't want to meet that Willy Wonka. Yo. <laughs> it's a Willy Wankster. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. oh shit. 
Shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think, I think we're done with Jordan. <laughs> yes. Is there any... Yeah, no. You, 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 last but not least is the last meal of US prisoners on death row. Um, so a photographer by, photogra- photographer by the name of Jackie Black recreated last meals requested by prisoners on death row before they were executed. Um, he also managed to get the occup- their education, occupation, and last statement. Uh, so, for example, this guy here, David Wayne Stoker, he went for burgers. yeah. He went for the. It looks like McDonald's. <clears throat> yeah, this is actually my favorite McDonald's meals. The two, uh, two medium, uh, two small cheeseburgers. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It slaps. You know, yeah. With some ice cream on the side. That's nice. What was his yeah. last statement? Maybe he had Coke as well, but you can't see it because black background. <laughs> Maybe uh, he must have gotten thirsty. <laughs> he probably needs a green screen. <laughs> what was his last statement? Uh, I am truly sorry for your loss, but I didn't kill anyone. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. So, but that's the thing, dude. Like, I mean, mm. abusers are in denial. Thieves are in denial. People do things and they, are, they, get, they, say, they still say they haven't done it, you know? Yeah. Like, ga- yeah. like people gas gaslight, you know? Yeah, definitely. So, um... What would oh look at that? You went for KFC, this man. Yo, yeah, for with, with, and a of, <laughs> with a slice of white bread. Jeez, bro, this guy's got no creativity. <laughs> Yo, what was his last words? I want you to know that I did not kill anyone. I love you all. All right, mm. what would okay? Well, let's go through them. <clears throat> so, this is by Thomas Andy Barefoot. I wonder if that's really his name. This is a horrible meal. Oh, he looks like he was vegetarian. Is, yeah, it is, he is <laughs> vegetarian. Yeah, there's nothing here that's meaty. It's corn, beetroot, spinach, beans, some other kind of beans, crackers I, yeah. with some tomato sauce and then mm-hmm. glass of coke. <laughs> you think if you're going to have a cheat meal, it's definitely going to be on death row. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you choose a healthy meal on death row, bro? You're about to fucking die, bro. I'm sure you're worried about CHD just before you get the fucking chair. <laughs> Also, yeah, bro, you don't have much of an appetite. Your appetite is the last thing on your mind. That's I'm true. Different. That's also true, bro. So this, I think it's a nice gesture, but like, also, you're about to fucking kill me. You think I care about the food you're gonna give me? Yeah. This guy's the one as long as I hope that one day we can all look back on the evil that we're doing right now, like the witches we burnt at the stake. What the damn? Hell? I want. I want everybody to know that I hold nothing against them. I forgive them all. I hope everybody I've done anything to will forgive me. This was in 1984, eh? So maybe they actually talking about actual witches. Oh, wow. I've been praying all day for the victim, victim's wife to drive the bitterness from her heart because that bitterness that's in her heart will send her to hell just as surely as any other sin. I'm sorry for everything I've done to anybody. I hope they'll forgive me. I mean, you can see a lot of guys have remorse before they fucking kick the bucket. Yeah, right. Of... Yo, when you're faith with, faced with your mortality... Yeah, this guy went for an apple, <laughs> dude. This guy, James Russell, the musician, <laughs> just went for an apple, bro. I guess mm-hmm. he was probably thought, well, the apple a day mm-hmm. keeps no well. There's no point of seeing no doctor after this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the apple a day keeps the mortician away. <laughs> Maybe apples will do more. <laughs> Hectic, and he had to go for the red one. The sin apple. Yeah. Damn, bro. The poison And apparently apple. he reported to have lasted three minutes. It was either not transcribed or not recorded. So <laughs> he didn't say anything. This Corn guy flakes. here had mm-hmm. flakes, bro. <laughs> With milk. Yes, what a boring ass meal, bro. It's good. Yeah. I'm sorry for what I've done. I deserve this. Jesus forgive me. Jesus forgive me. Oh, let me see. Jesu <laughs> Getting mad religious now, huh? Yeah, dude. Johnny mm-hmm. Frank Garrett had ice cream. Um, I'd like to thank my family for loving me and taking care of me and the rest of the world can kiss my ass. <laughs> so this guy crazy. this guy obviously didn't kill any one of his family members. It was probably someone that pissed him off outside of his family because he said yeah. the rest of the world can kiss yeah. his ass. So. It's pretty rock star, eh? Mm. Yeah, I hope they buried him upside down so the world can literally kiss his ass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Uh, yo, this guy went all out, bro. Uh, William Prince Davis. <laughs> this guy looks like he's going to play FIFA. 
He's eating like he's gonna he's, mates, bro. he's eating like he's gonna have a chill session, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's, he's like his friends are coming over, bro. Yo, I got some, yo, I got some cool drink, gents. Here's some, yo, just snack on these while we play this tournament. <laughs> yo, bro, he uh, was a roofer. Oh, yeah, he <laughs> was a roofer. That's an actual occupation. Yeah, I mean, probably working construction. I would like to say to the family how truly sorry I am in my soul and my heart of the hearts of the pain and misery that I have caused from my actions. I would like to thank all of the men on death row who have showed me love throughout the years. So obviously he was chilling there waiting for a while and someone who was also on death row was giving him advice. But how do you give someone advice when you haven't died yet? You know, like in terms of... <laughs> yeah. It's just because you've been waiting for death longer than he is doesn't mean you have experience in it. Like, yeah, bruh. <laughs> You don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, but you it's, like, it's like you go into jail and they're like, okay, you meet all the other guys. Like, yeah, I'm on death row too, man. I've been waiting for it for two years. You know, and the guy's like, oh, so tell me about it. Like, how's the electric chair? Well, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, bro, waiting for death. That must be crazy, bro. Sure. <clears throat> well, well, we are all waiting for death. It's just that we keep ourselves busy and not think about it. You know, so, I mean, it's inevitable. <laughs> this guy here has sweets, Munna. Sweets. Mm. Stock sweets. Stock sweets. Ah. Not serious. Like, you ask for a fist pop and he clear, bruh, before you die. <laughs> yeah. Can I please have, can I please have a fist pop? What? <laughs> Yo, Which hey, flavor? <laughs> Grape. <laughs> hey, Munna, you're about to die here, yeah, bruh. What's your last thing you want to put in your, your, your mouth, on your taste buds? Mm. Uh, actually, you know what? If I was really into sweet sauce, I would probably ask for push a push pop. <laughs> and uh, they'll be like, why do you want push a pop? Push pop, so I can just push it one more, one last time before I go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> do, you, do you remember push a push pop, bro? It was the weirdest shit ever. You just put your finger in it. <laughs> Oh, it's, like, it's like we're all sucking dog dicks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember that shit. They had some nice flavors. Know. Yeah, they did. I don't actually remember them. I just remember how. I don't know why it was fun to suck on those things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you don't know why it was funny. <laughs> oh, so Robert Anthony Ma Madden asked that a final check. This is I, I don't know if this is sad or hilarious, dude. Robert Anthony Madden asked that final meal to be given to a homeless person. <laughs> Request denied. <laughs> How fucked up is that, bro? Like this the is, U.S. government. Oh, uh, I thought this was in Cape Town. <laughs> By his friend Fontaine. Mm, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, that's so hectic for a request denied yeah and this guy is, was a cook but this guy also had the same thing I, I didn't, he said I didn't kill those people hopefully we'll all learn something about ourselves with each other we learn to stop the cycle of aging yada yada oh. yada yada <laughs> <laughs> pull the plug guys <laughs> that's, what, that's what the federal government was doing is like oh sure I have heard this one before Jeez. <laughs> it's always the same thing they, they, they're innocent they're saying sorry ah. yeah, this, guy this guy's meal I don't fish know is dry <laughs> bruh fish and chips where's the sauce bruh damn dude bruh there's the <laughs> salt <laughs> Tatar sauce, you need tatar sauce, bro. <laughs> yes, bro. How's he gonna swallow this food, bro? Yo. And look at those carrots with the boils. Oh, man, this is. What? What's in the bowl, bro? Is that onions or cabbage or lettuce? What is that? Yeah, it looks like lettuce, but just lettuce, which is so random. Yo, this is a weird meal. Mm. No wonder he's a, no one he's a killer. He's definitely look at that food that is. He's definitely a killer. <laughs> <laughs> this man is guilty as fuck, bro. So this, no, but this guy's interesting, bro. He, he was a motorcycle mechanic for 15 years, and look how long his statement is. It's actually very deep, bro. Oh, I didn't read like, it, eh? To, to be honest. Yo, no, this one is hectic, dude. This one, it's actually like, it's conspiracy theory type shit. He's like, I want to start out by acknowledging the love that I've had in my family. No man in this world 
has had a better family than me. I had the best parents in the world. I've had the most wonderful life any man could have ever had. I've never been more proud of anyone than I have of my daughter and son. There are a couple of matters I want to talk about since this is one of the few times people will listen to what I have to say. The United States has gotten to a place now where there is zero respect for human life. My death is just a symptom of a bigger illness. At some point, the government has to has got to wake up and stop doing things, destroy other countries and killing innocent children. The ongoing embargo and sanctions against places like Iran, Iraq, Cuba and other places, they are not doing anything to change the world and they are hurting innocent children. Perhaps more important in a lot of ways is what we are doing to the environment is even more devastating because as long as we keep going the direction we're going the end result it won't matter how we treat other people because everybody on the planet will be on their way out one of the few ways in the world the truth is ever going to get out or people are ever going to know what's happening is as long as we support a free press out there i see the press struggling to stay existent as a free institution what uh, yeah, the yeah. fuck bro drop mic drop mic Drop switch. Well, like what a shocking statement. I wonder. I wonder before they say their last statement. This guy's like speech. Speech. It's like uh after they they hung him on a rope, dude. I'm sure someone was like That statement is going to hang around for a while. <laughs> so, we've come to the end of the episode, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed another episode of Sunday Best with the two tea bags. Yeah, um, episode 20, right? Was it yeah, episode 20? 2020, man. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even say. 2020, we didn't. Yeah, it's a, it's a major milestone for us. Um in this episode because we're on episode 20, we're giving out free shops. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. Well, well, when we get sponsored one day, guys, we'll mm. give away free merch. Mm. But uh, <laughs> just keep supporting, and hopefully, you'll get there one day. So. Yes. And subscribe, like, share, comment, share all of all of the above, guys. You know Leave. how this shit goes. Also, remember articles at the bottom if you want to click and read them yourselves and comment on them and, and just let us know if there's any other funny bits. And yeah, please feel free to add. It's a comedy yeah. show. It's a comedy podcast. Yes. Signing out from Space Odyssey 2001. <laughs> Signing out from the Matrix. We plugged in. I chose the blue pill. Un- Peace out. Unplug yourself. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun.